Hi, if you're a lover of all things spooky and eerie, then Untold True Crime Horror is the perfect storytelling podcast for a spine-tingling experience. As you tune in to this petrifying horror experience, do not forget to subscribe, as your nightmares are about to get a whole lot scarier. As a society, we've progressed past the need for childbirth. It was messy, dangerous, and just completely inefficient. Nine months to wait for a baby that may or may not even be born alive. That's why we have the forest. The blessing started before my lifetime, but my mom told me about how her great-grandmother survived childbirth. Mom always winced when she told me about it. It always sounded like a horror story. I couldn't imagine ripping myself out of my mom's own body. No, my generation came from the forest, just like all the others had before me. We had been blessed. There was no death in life-giving anymore. Just, well, life. For a long time, I thought that I didn't want kids. I just didn't feel like I had that fatherly instinct, you know. I'd tell my mom and she'd always tell me, just wait until you find that special girl and wink at me. It always pissed me off, but it pissed me off even more when it turned out that she was right. I met Jess and everything changed. She was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in my life. She was pretty by everyone's standards, but she was beautiful in the way that people you love always are. I knew I was a lost cause the second she smiled at me across that crowded bar. I would have done anything for her, even go into the forest with her. Jess had been hinting at the forest increasingly more in the past couple of months. We'd been together five years at that point, and I knew how much she wanted to be a mom. I just never felt ready for it. Going into the forest together, well, it was binding in a way that nothing else was. Couples who went into that forest together never broke up. There was no divorce, no separations. We completely did away with the idea of marriage, because the forest was so much more binding than that. It almost seemed silly to sign a legal document when the forest was the true binder of us all. We decided to do it after a particularly long, difficult conversation. Jess was wearing her favorite well-worn purple pajamas, sitting on the couch with a pillow clutched to her, crying. I couldn't bear to see her cry. Besides, she had a point. Weren't humans inherently made to be parents anyway? Why was I fighting that drive? I had a flash of Jess's belly big and swollen with life, then shook it away. No one had gotten pregnant in generations. My natural drive must be to go to the forest. That had to be it. So I gave in. It was late autumn, and Jess never liked her summer birthday and shared it with four other people in our class growing up. She wanted our baby to have a more meaningful birth date, and not many people chose autumn. I guess it was more melancholic, and when people think of babies, they think of spring. Jess wanted those deep red and burnt orange hues for our baby, though. I remember how cold it was when we approached the tree line. Jess was wearing an old sweatshirt that she wore when she went to the gym. I was lugging a massive diaper bag. Jess wanted our baby to have everything, even if I had to carry 50 pounds of swaddles into the forest. Hello, a dark figure in front of us said. Are you here for life? Yes, we've come to care for life, Jess and I said in unison. Sure, it sounded a little stilted, but tradition was tradition. The figure nodded and motioned for us to follow them into the trees. I took a deep breath and glanced one last time at the stars above us. This was the last time in my entire life that I wasn't a father. I wasn't sure how I felt. Then I followed Jess in. We must have walked for an hour until we reached the clearing. I didn't know what to expect, beyond getting our baby. I asked mom about it, and she said everything would be explained to us and not to worry about it. It was so normal to me that I just took her at her word. It was simple. Go into the forest, then get a baby done. Then the clouds above the clearing shifted and bright moonlight threw the clearing into perspective. That was when I threw up. There were three women standing in the clearing. Well, maybe I should say girls. And they looked no older than 20 and had the same swollen belly I'd pictured Jess with. They stood silently, but the one on the far left had tears streaming down her face. I'd never seen a pregnant woman in real life. It was horrifying. Their hair was limp, eyes a doll and lifeless. Their skin had all taken on a gray pallor. I looked at Jess, my mouth agape with horror. She didn't look back at me, 
but looked more intently at the girls in front of us, almost sizing them up. She nodded at the one in the middle. Is she a natural redhead? Jess asked, the figure standing beside us. The figure nodded and just smiled at me. Wouldn't you love to have a little redhead running around the house? Our very own Pippi Longstockings. I stood there, numbly. Jess easily shrugged me off and asked the figure more questions. Health history, vision, personalities, pre-pregnancy of course. Questions about the fathers. Had they been tall? Short. She didn't want her child to be bullied about a weird nose. What were their noses like? She'd love blue eyes, but would be okay with green. Was that possible? Was she being too picky? She chuckled. Oh, babe, I'm so excited to give birth. It's what we've been waiting for, she said, beaming at me. The figure led the two other girls away from the clearing. Only the red-headed girl remained. She stared stoically ahead, determined to not meet my eye. I thought it was weird that Jess said she was going to give birth. It was horrifying, but I'd guessed we were here to watch this woman give birth and then, well, take her baby as our own. I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. The figure produced a knife then. It was curved, like knives I'd seen in old pirate storybooks. The handle gleamed in the moonlight, and the jet black handle seemed to disappear into the inky darkness. Jess took it from him and smiled at me again. She was crying. I just can't believe this is finally happening. She said, smiling through her tears. Jess, I said, but she was already gone. Then she was on the girl. It reminded me of a nature documentary I'd seen once, where the lion takes down an antelope. The girl had tried to run a bit, but she was clearly weak and Jess overtook her with ease. I couldn't watch as the woman I loved tore open the girl's stomach. I didn't believe it was real. I thought maybe if I run far enough away, then it wouldn't be real. So I ran. I collapsed at the tree line and sobbed. For how long, I don't know. The figure eventually reappeared to lead me back to the clearing. Cold feet are normal for first-time fathers, it said knowingly. Jess was cradling a baby in the clearing. She had swaddled it in the dinosaur swaddle I dutifully packed. Her hair was damp and plastered to her forehead, but she didn't seem to care as she cradled him there. She was cooing and singing softly to him as I approached her. Jess, I said as I kneeled beside her. What have you done, Jess? She beamed at me. She was Jess. She was my Jess. She was my Jess just covered in sweat and blood. She had been through childbirth and now she was holding our son. Meet our son, she said, and held him up to me. I held him in my arms as we left the forest. I looked behind me before we left and saw the figure digging a large hole. Nothing mattered, though. Nothing matters the second you meet your child.